So this week's episode of Rewrite takes a much more dark approach to the storytelling aspect and really develops Kodoro but also breaks him in such a unique way that makes him feel quite human and not like a supernatural element like the other episodes have made him because he does have that rewrite power. To me, despite how he does act around characters, at the core he still felt like an anomaly, someone who wasn't quite human. But this episode gives him some real human emotions when he has to witness people that he knows die but also when he first has to kill a man. Like I have to say, a lot of times when stories go the route of telling someone in a war setting they have to kill people, they go the route of trying to make it feel like, oh this person is upset that they killed someone for the first time. But a lot of the times I feel like it doesn't really hit the nail on the head of what would happen because most people if they were to hold a gun and end someone's life, they wouldn't be able to shake it off that fast. And I really liked how they handled Kuro this week because he literally pulls the trigger and he's just broken, he's shattered. And when he's eating his food, the blood from his meat, it triggers him into such an emotional state that he's puking in the alleyway and he's willing to end his own life because he can't deal with what he did. He ended a life. And how they portrayed that emotion really made me feel for the character and just really thought, Wow, Kodoro truly doesn't want to kill people. He really does feel like a normal human person. And if it isn't for this girl who Kodoro knows from this area here, he would have literally ended his own life like some people do in that setting. I thought just really seeing the humanity of Kodoro and really him not really accepting or fitting in with this setting, this elite force that Guardian has of these superhuman people like Kodoro, but he's just kind of being picked on. He's the new guy. People are going to throw all their bags, let him take that. And he really only has one friend in this army. His name is Lewis, who unfortunately has to go in a heroic way near the end of the episode, which I have to say was pretty emotional, I have to admit. I mean, the episode overall, it wasn't really about getting us connected to, say, Lewis and these kids. Kids. It was to get us to feel for why Kodro likes these people and why Kodro feels for these characters as he's in such a setting that makes him so depressed to the point of literally wanting to kill himself that he isolates himself around these children, these children who are less fortunate than himself and other people and he helps them, he donates money, he gives them food, sweets, chocolates, things like that. So he has a sense that he's doing something good so when he goes into that battlefield, when he has to end someone's life, you get a sense of well, at least I am doing something good over here. I'm helping someone's life instead of taking it. So I liked how they portrayed that because, yes, within the course of an episode, we see him become friends with Lewis. We see him get connected to these kids, and at the end, most of them die, minus the kids. I mean, a handful of the kids get to survive that mission there. But still, we get a sense of when some of those kids get shot up, you don't really say, oh man, it's kids who got killed, that's why I'm kind of upset. You get a sense of, I feel really fucking bad for Kodro, because of what just happened. And the same thing can be said for Lewis. Sure, Lewis didn't get a shit ton of screen time, but you understood and you felt bad for when he went out because that was Kodoro's one friend in this army, the one who wasn't an asshole, the one who felt like he was human the same way as Kodoro. I think that's gonna go underappreciated because a lot of people are like, well, I didn't really care when Lewis died because I only knew him for an episode. But the episode showed you why Kodoro really liked the guy and why Kodoro really liked these kids. So when that happens, you get a sense of, I can completely understand why Kodoro so just depressed and upset that this happened. Sure, if you were to play the vision of, I'm sure you get even more time. You get connected yourself to these characters, but I don't think that was necessary. I think what was necessary was to give you an understanding of why this character, why our main character is connected to these characters, and you understand why he breaks when they are taken away from him, and why he's doing such extraordinary things with helping these kids at the end of the episode, literally saying, screw you, Guardian, I'm going to rescue kids who have these powers so they can't be wrapped up into this shitty situation to the point of literally starting an orphanage for him or giving them part of his money and to the point of they're able to sustain themselves, they have their own income now. You get a sense of why he's doing everything that he's doing and you understand exactly why that is within one episode. And that's really impressive to me because this episode I thought was properly paced. I thought from start to finish, you got the understanding of Kodoro not wanting to be here. You felt that he was human. You felt that he was breaking when he had to pull the trigger. Then you get a sense of his one and only friend Lewis in this episode to then see that mission after you get the kind of carefreeness of these kids and you can understand that Kodoro is using them as kind of a crutch to make him feel better, but he does care for them, but he just wants something so he doesn't feel so sick and disgusted with himself when he pulls the trigger. So when that final stuff happens, when Lewis kills some of those kids, when he has to sacrifice the wounded kids so the others who weren't shot get to have a chance at survival, to even him literally saying, you know what, my power works on my life force, I don't care, take as much life force as you want, so he has the speed to get the medicine to care for these kids. 
Within one episode, you got all that. Sure, this could have been a few episodes, but I thought the way they paced it and the way they structured it, the way they directed it, was perfect and got you such a sense of, I understand exactly what Kotaro is feeling, and I understand why he's pissed or upset or even happy or sad. And that's what this episode aimed to do, and I thought it did it beautifully. To be honest, I think this was the best rewrite episode between both seasons. I thought from start to finish, it was exhilarating. It had nice slice of life moments, but at the core, it just really gave some amazing development for Kotaro and really showed you who he is at the core he isn't hiding anything anymore this is the true Kodoro without any barriers or limits and to see how he's now the one-man squad in this army punching the man who used to punch him around but also just I thought the visual presentation was honestly stunning I thought there definitely was a couple of hiccups here or there maybe when we were focusing on Kodoro we saw Luz in the background a bit of a derpy face but at the core consistency wise with the animation to the art style to the individual character models but also the lighting I thought the lighting was fantastic as just the overall presentation because we always been inside the city or we've been in the woods so to have a more gloomy sandy location that we've been focusing on with the way they were using the lighting it was a nice change of pace and really set the mood for this episode but I thought visually it looked really damn good there wasn't many issues that I noticed throughout this episode even the CG character models I think a lot of people who may not like the CG in the way they use it I thought they were pretty unique with how they used them this week's episode and just overall I thought visually especially the voice acting with Kodoro everything from start to finish I love this episode I thought it was a near perfect episode and really has me interested to see what's gonna happen now with how everything happened here because I thought this was a fantastic episode in that moment when Kodoro is about to be eaten by one of these familiars there or these summons and it stops I'm just thinking to myself are these kids seriously gonna be there is Kodoro gonna have to kill these kids like what's gonna happen but when Lewis pulls that trigger by accident that was just the perfect way to reveal that. It was sad, but it was the perfect way. I just thought, really, this was such an interesting episode. Seeing Kodora at just a vulnerable state, such an emotional and broken state, I thought this was a fantastic episode, and I can't wait to see what happens next week. But for anyone who watched this episode, did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you think it was just okay? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And before you leave, hit that like button to share your support. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.